The tragic death of David Knowles, one of the UK's most prominent pro-Ukrainian voices, has taken a bizarre turn. Is it starting to look more and more like a Russian-backed effort? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about it. So this is an interesting development, or at least interesting if you are uh, didn't watch my previous video, because... The Telegraph's journalist, uh, David Knowles, who was uh, one of the most prominent voices in the UK uh, covering the Ukraine conflict, right? Uh, he was he passed away in Gibraltar at just age 32 of what they're calling a cardiac arrest. Now, the UK's counter-terror police uh, are now involved in the investigation. Now, I point out first off, this is a significant shift uh, from what we heard previously, and I want to discuss, it's, it, it, there's a bunch of hidden information in here that if you know a little bit, uh, is, is actually pretty significant. And I think the intended recipient is not just savvy readers, I think it's actually the Kremlin itself. Right. So before we get too deep into decoding these public statements, uh, I wanted to quick mention the fact that uh, while David was able to work under the auspices of the Telegraph, I have no such uh, uh, entity covering me. Uh, and that means I depend on you guys to keep me independent and keep me able to do this every single day. That's why I have combatvetnews.com. Combat Vet News is my version of Patreon where supporters can directly support me in exchange. Of course, I'm out here putting out two new videos every single week, uncensored combat footage straight from the front line. Today, we saw some absolutely wild footage, for, or excuse me, yesterday's video covered some wild footage from Russia's attempt at a counterattack in Kursk and a terrifying uh, look at the perspective of an RT journalist who is being stalked by an FPV drone. Absolutely crazy stuff. And uh, of course, if you want to become a lieutenant tier member, that's going to uh, get you the weekly Q and A's where you can ask me anything. We had a bunch of great questions uh, last week, or excuse me, yesterday. Um, everything from the future of the Ukraine conflict uh, to my time in Afghanistan, and of course, the colonel tier gets all that plus the by name shout outs. Okay, so let's take a look a little deeper here. Um, According to the Telegraph, British counter-terror police assist in investigating the death of Telegraph journalist David Knowles. And he was, of course, the co-founder of Create Ukraine, the latest, a, a popular podcast with something over 100 million listens that started literally the day of the invasion and has gone basically every day for two years. He was on holiday in Gibraltar when he died from a cardiac arrest at age 32. Now, as you guys know, we talked about uh, earlier... Uh, that the reasons I find this suspicious, first off, um, there's no individual like smoking gun here, but this is a, a an individual who was 32 years old, uh, healthy enough to at least travel to war zones, right? And so while it's not unheard of for undiagnosed heart conditions uh, and other cardiac issues to kind of emerge in early or in, in you know, earlier adulthood, uh, it's worth noting that um, this is, is fairly unusual again for someone at that age, but it alone isn't really uh, that substantial. What's more significant, I think, is that it took place in Gibraltar. Now, why do I find this significant? It's because of the geography, right? Gibraltar, as you can see, is on the southern tip of Spain, and we know that Russian uh, FSB, um, or at least their lackeys, uh, were able to uh, kill uh, the Russian uh, pilot who had defected. Um, uh, let's see. And he defected. Uh, his name was Maxim uh, Kuzminov. And Kuzminov defected, uh, I think, a year and a half, two years ago. Um and defected with Ukrainian intelligence. Ukrainian intelligence actually was having him live under an assumed identity in Spain. And he was killed, actually, there in the village of Villa Joyosa um, uh, just a few months after his defection. Um, and so, again, the uh, SVR, Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, uh, issued this statement about Maxim's death. He said this traitor and criminal became a moral corpse the moment he planned his dirty and terrible crime. And 
the SVR did not confirm or deny Russian involvement in his death, uh, but he, it's notable, again, was killed in a, the town of Villa Joyosa. And when we look at where Villa Joyosa is in Spain, you can see that it is very near, relatively speaking, to Gibraltar, right? So we're talking about very close by. So we know that Russian intelligence services are active here um, and that they are willing to, that the, they feel confident and comfortable enough to conduct assassinations uh, in this area, right? They feel that they are able to subvert the Spanish uh, authorities sufficiently to, to conduct these kind of operations. So here's where things are interesting, is that the Royal Gibraltar Police said in a statement on Thursday that they were sending out a mutual aid request for specialist support to the UK. Now, here's what they said. They said, quote, there are no specific concerns at this time with regard to the death. And they said, quote, following the RGP's mutual aid request, detectives from the UK counterterrorism policing have been appointed to provide support to the RGP, the uh, Royal Gibraltar Police Investigation, due to their existing capability and their experience of dealing with international inquiries. So here's some of the codes. First off, the UK counterterror police are not focused just on terrorism. You might recall the Sainsbury and Amesbury investigations. These were the 2020, uh, the, a 2018 poisoning conducted by Russian intelligence. This was headed by the counterterrorism policing. So it's interesting that the same UK agency that investigated this specific Russian attack, Russian assassination of a UK national on UK territory is also being brought in. Now that itself isn't necessarily a, a, a tremendously significant, right? This is like saying the FBI is involved in multiple investigations and, and, and this is true. But again, this is another one of those things to just file in your evidence claim. Because again, based on the statements before this, we did not even receive notification that this was a, 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 a criminal enterprise at all. Again, the only thing we told, we were told, was that he David died of a cardiac arrest, which again, while tragic and while extremely rare, is not unheard of. Uh, again, if you told me an athlete went on a swim uh, and it had an undiagnosed heart condition and passed away, these are things that can happen. Uh, he went on a run perhaps. Um, so not by any stretch of the imagination is this unheard of, but it's another piece of evidence. It, it, the statement indicated, gave no indication that there was a crime taking place at all. And now you notice that even though they said there's no specific concerns with regard to the death, you notice why they're being investigated. One, they're acknowledging that there is a Royal Gibraltar police investigation taking place. And so right there, it tells us there's something suspicious about his death, but they say they have an existing capability and experience in dealing with international inquiries. Now, here's the thing to ask yourself. If this were truly a man who had, who had simply died of an undiagnosed medical condition in the course of exercise, what would be the international aspect of this? Because remember, guys, Gibraltar is a British territory. So it's not really overseas. Do you see what I mean? This is a UK citizen who died on British territory of, again, according to the previous statement, gave no indication there was anything other than natural causes. And so this is... Very interesting. A, it, it, so it's telling us, first off, that there is an international dimension to this, which implies that some aspect, possibly the person or materials related to his death, are in, in another country, such as Spain or perhaps Russia. So this right there should tell you that there is something afoot, right? And a spokesman for the journalist family said, we note the statement from the Royal 
uh, police at Gibraltar today about David, particularly the assertion that, quote, there are no specific concerns at this time with regard to the death. We do not wish to say anything further while the authorities continue their investigations, plural, and ask that the family's privacy be respected. Now, again, none of these things are a smoking gun. None of these things say Russian intelligence was involved. And I'm not here to promote a conspiracy theory. But what I point out, right, is that the, for a, a, this is so, this seems unusually bizarre for a simple medical accident, medical event death inquiry. Again, international inquiries, the RGB being provided by officers from counterterrorism policing. Again, officers, detectives, counterterrorism policing. And, and, and to be clear, they may simply, this may simply be a routine part of ruling out foul play. They may say, listen, we're going to do an autopsy. We want you guys to just take a look at the scene and it, just let us know if this looks like foul play, right? That would be something that would be routine for a policing agency, especially an a, when, the a, when the lead agency is, again, uh, the uh, tiny police of Gibraltar um, with just 32,000 people. So, stuff to think about, right? And again, this is not, I'm not here to promote conspiracy theories, but one of the things that Russia wants to be able to do is conduct these kind of actions. If this, they wish they could do this, right? This is something that that Russia hopes it can do, and it hopes it can do it quietly without creating a a international outcry, right? They don't. What they what they want to be able to do is do these kinds of operations, silence critics amid no controversy. So I feel an obligation to cover it. If this does turn out to be associated with Russian intelligence, um, then I would want to make sure that you guys are aware of it, that it doesn't get buried. Um, because again, some governments may want this story to be less prominent because it would be seen as escalating the, cro the conflict. And remember, guys, whenever Putin, because Putin's rhetoric is very much, oh, escalation, oh, the West is escalating this conflict. If it turns out that he's associated with this death, then who exactly could we say is escalating the conflict? Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Hit that subscribe button. That makes a difference. Uh, thank you to our Colonel Tier members like Martin Baum, Chris Rossi, Stuart Abel, Daniel Brown, Sergey Zinchenko, Chris Holmes, Chris Gorsuch, Daniel M., and Ida Skycall, as well as all of our Lieutenant Tier members. I couldn't do this without you guys. Uh, I, I appreciate you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.